Let's say, hypothetically, you only had $5 and you need a graphics card. You go to eBay, sort by cheapest, and this is what you get. Well, this is the 3450 and it's a piece of sh- Let me start with the good points. It works, the fan spins, and it's cheap. Everything else is just horrible. It uses a DMS59 port whose adapter costs more than the whole card, it only supports up to DirectX 10, and it has less RAM and a slower core clock than my watch. And we're gonna try to game on it. Now, we have a few tricks up our sleeves. First, modded drivers. Ammer Nime Zone has some of the best third-party drivers out there and they do support Terascale cards. Secondly, overclocking. The AMD GPU clock tool does not have any fail safe, so I can push this thing as far as possible. And finally, hyper memory. This lets our card use system memory as VRAM and it is great for old graphics cards. Still, the 3450 doesn't have a lot going for it, so to give it the best possible chance, I'm gonna clean it out and replace the paste. And here's our 3450. There's not a whole lot to it, so it shouldn't take too long to take apart. Now, unless you have a habit of looking at cheap GPUs on eBay, you've probably never heard of the 3450 before. Long story short, it came out in 2007 and was the second worst installment in the HD 3000 series. It uses the Terascale RV620 GPU of the LE variant built on TSMC's 55 nanometer process with 181 million transistors. The core also comes clocked at 600 megahertz and has 40 shading units, 4 texture mapping units, 4 render output units, and 2 compute units. For reference, the 7900 XTX has 96 compute units and 6100 44 shading units. It also only has 256 megabytes of DDR2 VRAM, but that shouldn't be a problem thanks to the hyper memory feature I mentioned earlier. And there's the bracket off. And aside from being outdated and weak, it only supports them to DirectX 10.1, and most modern games aren't going to be able to even start. So what is this card even good for? Well, its main selling point is that it's cheap. However, that selling point does not seem to be working very well because eBay is flooded with these things. The only benefit that it really offers is its ability to control two monitors with a single DMS59 port. This was great for Office and other OEM applications because it was cheaper, cut down on cables, and was easy to use. But for modern consumers, this technology is a essentially useless. Not many modern monitors even use DVI or VGA, and in fact, the adapter costs about as much as a graphics card. Oh my god, dude, I'm f***ing this thing up, look at this. And for the thermal paste, we're gonna be using some good old Arctic MX4. Either way, it didn't take long to clean it up, and it was now time to put it into our test system. Okay, and we're good to go. Let's start into the test system. It's a modified Protoss 400G1, and it has an i3-4130, 16GB of RAM, and Windows 7 running on an SSD. Not the fastest computer, but fast enough for this card. Now, from the get-go, the 3450 was giving me problems. For example, if the video cable was plugged into the GPU, then the computer wouldn't boot, and when you took out the cables, rebooted the system, and put the cables back in, the screen would continuously flicker. But we were able to make it into Windows, and that's all that matters. Installing the Amarneem Zone drivers went quick and without an issue, however, the card hated overclocking. Online, some people were able to push their 3450 to 789 MHz on the core and 578 on the memory, but I was only able to get mine up to 570 and 550. This card was essentially on its deathbed from the start, and by the end, it was beginning to artifact even without an overclock. So how does it hold up in games? The first game up is Half-Life 2, and it ran much worse than I expected. I tried running the game in 720p with the lowest settings, but it was a laggy mess with a wildly inconsistent frame rate. But lowering the resolution to 848 by 480 did nearly double the frame rate and was actually playable. The GPU core was maxed out in this title, but the VRAM sat at about 130 megabytes. With the overclock running as fast as possible, this is as good as Half-Life was gonna run. If you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that GTA 5 will run on just about anything, but this was an exception. I tried it out for the sake of running a semi-modern game, but it ended up with an average of 9 FPS and looked like a slideshow. On the bright side, the hyper memory was working and the core did have 3 gigs of VRAM at its disposal, but it was nowhere near fast enough to keep up. Honestly, this is just painful to watch, but CSGO did run a bit better. It's still not good and wasn't competitively playable, but was comparatively better and did get 29 FPS. Similarly to Half-Life, there were copious amounts of performance dips, but this one had a lot of screen tearing. It seemed like nearly 1 out of every 10 frames had some sort of distortion, and this is the worst I've ever seen CSGO look. When CSGO released, Terrascale 1 cards were on the end of their relevancy, but some like the 4850 can still run the game well, and even though it has gotten harder to run over the years, I doubt the 3450 was ever capable of running it at 60 FPS. 
Left 4 Dead 2 was a similar story, but it was able to pull off a playable 720p. It was with the lowest settings, but this was the nicest looking game I was actually able to playably run. The frame rate was stable, and unlike previous titles, performance dips were far and few between. You could probably squeeze out another 10 to 15 FPS in a lower resolution, but this was a good balance between frame quality and quantity. However, the best performing game was Blood and Bacon. There is not a whole lot to render in this game, so it makes sense, but it was able to pull off a solid 60 FPS in 720p. The only video quality setting you can change aside from resolution is anti-aliasing, and to maximize the frame rate, I turn it down as far as possible. But given this performance, you could definitely increase the quality and resolution a bit. The next game was kind of a disappointment. I'll often mention how well Insurgency runs on low-end systems, but in 720p, the 3450 could hardly push out 7 frames per second, and this was with the lowest settings. I ended up dropping the resolution down to 640x480, and although this did raise performance to 17 FPS, it was still far from playable. So unfortunately, this is a great example of why why not to get this card? And to wrap up testing was Critical Annihilation which got 12 FPS. On the bright side, performance was stable and didn't fluctuate much but was hardly playable and I pushed the settings as low as they can go. In this game, you can't decrease the resolution below 720p, but even if 480p was an option, I doubt it would have ran much better. So even at its best, the 3450 can't really do anything. It'll run some games decently, but most titles released after 2008 are not going to be enjoyable. And when I finished up testing, I've noticed that the card has started artifacting even without an overclock applied. It was never meant to be pushed this hard, and it was well out of its intended use case. I also wanted to mention that there was another version of this card with a half gig of RAM that connects via PCI and has a passive cooler. I'm I'm not sure if it'd be much better, but based on how this one performed, I don't think it would be. And even though it was very cheap, the price to performance ratio of the 3450 is horrible. For 15 more dollars, I'd say just get a K620 on eBay and it'll make a night and day difference. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider leaving a like or subscribing because it genuinely helps me out. If you want to join the community, there's a link to the official Jane Knight Discord server in the description alongside a few donation methods that directly support the channel. If you have any questions or related comments, then leave them below and I'll be sure to respond to them. That's about it. Have a great day. Bye. First, we can use modded drivers. Anner meme, Anner meme, Anner, 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 Anner 9, Anner, what the f-